such a good day today because I'm driving the 2014 Mercedes-Benz SLK 55 AMG. It's a hot day, but I don't really care. And I'm driving with the roof down. Under the hood is the same 5.5 litre V8 engine that does duty on the E63 AMG. But the E63 AMG has a twin turbo setup, whereas this is naturally aspirated. So, well, the E63 makes about 570 PS of max power, whereas this makes a much more usable 420 PS. Well, everything about this car just screams practicality. Not only are its dimensions perfect for city transport, but when you're driving around in the city at low speeds, what the engine computer does is it shuts off four of the cylinders, thereby making this unit much more efficient, so it's not going to burn a hole through your pocket. Now, whenever I'm driving an AMG, I just simply have to talk about the soundtrack of the car, because, well, AMGs are known to make the best music. And well, especially more so in this particular car because it's a convertible. So you can hear the roar from the engine, every pop and crackle from the exhaust when you downshift, amplified about four times. That is what I'm talking about. Now there are so many things in this car that will remind you of aircrafts and aviation technology in general. The way this car drives and feels, the controls that you have at your hand, the general layout of this dashboard, these fantastic propeller shaped air vents, well there is a lot actually. And well, I know just the right place where I can find out more about this relationship between this car and aircraft. This is the Baramati airstrip and we are the Carver Flying School. Now, as you can see, we have some fantastic playmates around. There's a wonderful airstrip behind there. So I'm going to do the obvious thing, which is race this car against these aircraft. No, I'm just kidding. Can't possibly think that in a country as bureaucratic as ours, that's even possible. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to dig deep into the century-old marriage between aircrafts and automobiles. Aviation began as an extended distributory of automobiles over more than 100 years ago. It has of course since then come a long way. From valiant yet catastrophic attempts at jumping from towers and cliffs in winged contraptions to modern day hypersonic jets. The roots of aviation can be traced to automobiles of the time but since its inception there's been a significant give-and-take of technology between the two sciences. Today, many modern-day cars claim to be directly inspired by aviation. Well, to understand this correlation between aviation and automobiles, I have with me Captain Swapnil, who uh, works with the Carver Flying Institute here at Baramati. Uh, Captain, it's quite evident, isn't it, this percolation of technology from uh, aviation into automobiles? Contrary, I will actually say it is not from the aviation to the automobile, but historically it is actually seen that automobile engineering actually led to the aviation. The same engine, what is there in the car, was taken into the aircraft and the crankshaft of the engine was actually fitted to the propeller. Uh, as the only thing. To, uh, propelling the wheels. That's right. Well, that's historically. So that's... Uh, we know that the first powered aircraft was because of an automobile. but. Since then, uh, aviation technology has leapfrogged far ahead of uh, automobile technology. So, well, now you see a lot of technology from aviation coming into uh, the cars of modern day. Yeah, obviously, nowadays uh, it has been changing the pace at which aviation industry has been growing. Mm, systems like navigation systems, GPS, the technology uh, used for automation or FedEx system which you have in your uh, which is the ECU. ECU, that's right. 
and the most important the aerodynamics which is being used in your cars as well, well. of course everything in cars nowadays is aerodynamics in fact That's all right. these gimmicks in formula 1 you have the ground effect and the downforce have all come from uh, well the flights well i know that you're really proud of your aircraft and of your trade Obviously. but uh, today i have this fantastic uh, slk 55 amg with me why don't we head out for a spin and see if i can change your mind about cars Pilots tend to have this air of superiority over us drivers, don't they? And I knew the captain wouldn't really be expecting anything more than just a pretty looking car. But the moment I floored the gas pedal, the AMG responded with a fury almost keen on proving my point to the captain. He could hardly believe the kind of g-forces he was experiencing in a machine that never really loses contact with the ground. I felt quietly proud of the look of awe on his face as he went on about his fancy of reversed aerodynamics on the car. The same science that helped his aircraft take off was working brilliantly to keep the AMG stuck to the ground. According to him, all I had to do was use an inverted spoiler and he was convinced that the SLK 55 AMG would literally take off. Well, what do you think, Captain? Quite an impressive car, isn't it? Obviously yeah it is an impressive and it was amazing experience but I should now show you what my aircraft can do I know the panel of your car you call it cockpit but this is what the real cockpit is all about Yeah well this is the real cockpit isn't it What I immediately realized as I held my breath for my first ever attempt to fly was that the passenger convenience technologies and the basic cockpit architecture between both the automobile and the aircraft was inherently quite similar. Well all those thoughts immediately vanished as I was about to take off. Our jump seats are ready to roll. Yeah. Just yes, receive the uh, the clearance for take off. Okay well if you can tell from this wide grin plastered across my face that was insane fun. Well captain how do we summarize this now? Would you buy the car or would you buy the plane? As you said obviously any time aircraft. I'll tell you what. This has a V8. That has an inline 4. Surely 8 is better than 4. Okay. Let me ask you some contrary questions. How much time you took from Mumbai to here in this car? Well, I was well cruising along, so maybe it's like five hours. Okay, I can do that in one hour. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have to give it to you. That is an aircraft. How much fuel you spent on? Well, this is a Guzzler, so I don't know about five to six grand, give or take. Five to six grand. I can do that. Less than two thousand rupees. What do you no think? No way. If you park this car, how much it will cost you? In say some of the airports or somewhere nearby. maybe in parking lots or somewhere but i don't know airport parking lots really loot these days but surely it cannot be as much as parking an aircraft at an airport when i go to juhu first two hours are obviously free of cost and later on i pay 1.6 rupee per hour what do you think that can be possible that can be possible. that is that is the see, case well i can <laughs> see that this is a losing argument but i know one thing that my slk can do that your aircraft can't let's see that Yeah. That's something. That? That's something amazing. Obviously, yeah. this this obviously can't. This I will have to give you. It's an amazing thing. There you have it. My SLK wins. Yeah. Well, my conversation with Captain Swapnil opened a whole new prospect. Personal aircrafts were never really a luxury an ordinary man could afford. Until now, you could now buy an aircraft for as much or a little more money than the SLK 55 AMG. Of course. You might argue what about the running costs the availability of landing strips the prospect of parking the aircrafts or even the cost and availability of aviation fuel Getting a private flying license is a very simple procedure and there are many schools such as the Kawa Flying School which train hundreds of pilots every year There are more airstrips in India than you could have ever imagined 
In fact, just the state of Maharashtra has over 50 airstrips. And believe it or not, unless you're parking at major metropolitan airports, parking the aircraft is incredibly cheap. A while back, aircrafts could only use the Avgas 100 LL fuel which was imported and thus much more expensive. However, today, modern aircrafts like the Diamond DA-40 and the Cessna 172 can use the easily available and locally refined Jet A fuel, which, unbelievably, is even cheaper than the petrol you use in your car. Well, that was an incredibly edifying experience thanks to Kawa Flying School. I don't care what Captain Swapnil says, I think I'd pick this car over the aircraft any day. Yep. Maybe not. I don't know. I'd like both. <laughs>